With this video, we are continuing our series on troubleshooting performance issues in Windows Virtual Desktop environments. Today, we're going to talk about RAM and how to troubleshoot RAM-related issues in virtual desktops. My name is Vadim Vladimirsky, and if you are a managed services provider looking to build or grow your Azure practice with WVD, then this is the channel for you. On WVD session hosts, RAM is primarily consumed by applications that users run within their session. Modern applications are really memory hungry. Each Chrome browser tab, Open Word document, Outlook, Teams app, or really many other applications will use up a lot of RAM on a typical user session. Now, using RAM in and of itself is not really a problem and is not going to cause any performance issues. As a matter of fact, the more data an application can load into memory, the faster it's going to be able to fetch this information, as opposed to having to go to disk and fetch it in a significantly slower way. However, once you have a lot of applications trying to compete for a limited amount of memory resources on a VM and use an exceedingly large amount of RAM, then you start running out of available free RAM capacity and the operating system has no choice but to put some of that usage into the disk, into the page file. So the thing that you really are looking for is not so much high memory utilization, although having high memory utilization is a likely indication that there may be a performance issue, but you're really looking for something called hard faults, it used to be called page faults, which is the process that the operating system goes through when an application is expecting a memory page to be in RAM and it's not found there. So the operating system will go ahead and fetch that memory page from disk. And disks are obviously much slower than RAM, so performance degrades as a result of that activity. The way you're going to look for page faults is by opening up the Windows Resource Monitor. It could be opened from the Performance tab of the Task Manager or just by typing ResMon into the Run box. You're going to go to the Memory tab, and the first thing you'll do is look in the box on the bottom right that shows you hard faults per second, and you will see if there are any hard faults that are currently happening. If there is lots of activity in that box, then you can be fairly assured that you are having a performance issue and it is RAM related. If there are no hard faults that are going on in that box, then you're likely not RAM constrained, even if utilization is high. Now, if you're using Task Manager only and you're looking on the Performance tab and you're seeing how much RAM is consumed, even if it's a high percentage, you're not seeing the hard page faults in the Task Manager. So really looking in the Resource Monitor or another tool that can show you page faults is important. Now, if you do identify that there are hard page faults, happening on the system, next thing is to know what is causing those. And that can be done by sorting the processes in the list on the memory tab of the resource monitor tool by the hard faults per second counter. This will show you which processes are driving the majority or good portion of the hard faults and can give you an idea of really what's causing a lot of the memory contention on the system. What can you do about memory contention? Well, if the applications are using it up legitimately, then you either need to instruct users to close some applications or reduce the load on a particular session host VM. And this can be done just like with CPU by either reducing the number of users who are logging into a particular session host by setting up multiple session hosts and distributing the users across them, or by upgrading your VM instance to one with more RAM. Now, if you're using a generic purpose D-series VM, where the number of gigabytes of RAM, which is four gigabytes, is assigned to each CPU core, what you can do if you're memory constrained and not CPU constrained, you can change your generic purpose D-series VM to an E-series, and an E-series is a memory optimized instance that gives you double the RAM with a very small increase in cost per VM. So if you, for example, have a D8 SV3, you're going to have eight cores and 32 gigs of RAM. And if you upgrade that VM to an E8 SV3, 
you're still going to have eight cores, and that doesn't really matter because you're not CPU constrained in this particular case, but you'll have double the RAM of 64 gigs. And the increase in cost is gonna be roughly in the 15% range. So even though you're doubling the amount of RAM, the cost per VM is only increasing by 15%. So those are the two strategies you have to either lower the number of users by spreading them out across multiple VMs or by increasing the VM size. You should also look for applications that are consuming excessive amounts of RAM because there could be a memory leak in a particular application. To solve the problem, you can either kill that particular process or sign out a particular user under whom the process is running. And you should also instruct your users to log off at the end of the day when they're done so that the system can properly clean up all of their sessions and applications and, and memory that's being consumed by those. Finally, if you want to automate this process of logging users out or restarting the VMs, you can consider creating some group policies to specify session limits to log users out after a period of an activity. You can schedule automatic session host reboots overnight so that users come into a new session host that is fully ready to go and has a clear memory on the following morning or you can use the auto scaling process that will automatically do that reboot and rebuild of the session host for you. As you can see, memory problems uh, can cause performance issues, but they should be fairly easy to identify with the Windows Resource Manager, and they can be addressed in the ways that we've mentioned. If you want to learn more about additional performance troubleshooting strategies, go ahead and click on the link below to see the full write-up on all the available strategies.